distribution should be what the government uses in all e-governance uh, programs. Uh, so that, you know, any application that's built on BOSS, that be usable throughout the country because the entire country is using BOSS distribution. That is the idea. Uh, they have developed so far both desktop and server versions. There's also a version of BOSS for educational purposes uh, and, you know, another for NetBoss and so on. Uh, uh, the, the key, of course, in all open source, as we know, is not to produce the first version, but how do you support that going forward? How do you keep upgrading it, supporting it, and so on and so forth? So what CDAC is doing now is it has opened its own support center. So there are 11 different places called for, uh, BOSS support centers. And there is a 24 by 7 BOSS help desk available, right? All managed by CDAC, right? Uh, 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 and uh, yeah, so this is, uh, okay, uh, let me complete this. Uh, so right now, of course, some users are there, um, last one year. Uh, in the Navy, there are some people using it. Government telecom operator, BSNL, some people have started using it. Some district administrations have started using it. So it's too early to say whether this is, uh, successful or not, uh, uh, boss, uh, uh, because ultimately people would look at what support is behind it. And at the moment, they are seeing CDAC behind it, which you see, um, since <laughs> I hope, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm from the government, so I can speak about that. Government is not the most reassuring picture for a, uh, a long term support for anything for that matter, because elections come, governments go back, you don't know what's going to happen uh, when the next uh, government comes. So if, you, if I'm a business and I want to start depending on BOSS because CDAC is supporting it, I would think quite a number of times, uh, right? So listen, the point is that they haven't developed a community support for it. Uh, uh, I think one of the things that we are being mentioned, the single vendor kind of thing, in a way it's that kind of model. There is a government agency which is trying to promote a distribution, but without a community for supporting it. And uh, 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 so right now, which means support is by a corporate entity. CDAC is also done than a corporate entity, the government entity, still a corporate entity. Now, uh, you know, it has to work with, it has to keep an eye on the bottom line. And the day it doesn't have the money, it wouldn't support. The point, in my opinion, is that it's a very good idea to have a national distribution, uh, but it has to be backed by a, a large community which can support that. Don't depend, don't leave the support to a corporate entity. Anyway, that's a decision government has made. But that initiative probably is interesting. Uh, the most potent part of that would be doing this, right? Um, it's not done yet, but they're trying to do that. Uh, right, now let me come to what we do. That's on higher education. Uh, uh, what are the initiatives that we do? Uh, basically, we have been working with universities and see how universities can uh, introduce, adapt uh, as much of open source uh, as they can in everything that we do, right? Uh, uh, for example, of course, it's most obvious that computer education, computer and IT education, uh, ought to be using almost all of its open source. That's very obvious, right? So we talk to you know various departments and see how it can be done. And another thing, probably less obvious but equally important, is uh, uh, you know as people say, computers is uh, you know, or open source is too big to be left to computer science people, because it's everybody concerned. If you go to university, in fact, it's a fact that uh, our university, the uh, large part of the budget for software purchase is not by the computer science department, for the mechanical engineering people or chemical civil engineering people, CAD people, and so on. So it's important to talk to them about availability of open source packages. Uh, you know, open in other domains and try and make them use. Uh, that is, uh, that's one thing that we found. And probably, in fact, they're lots more receptive uh, to the idea than uh, the hardcore computer science uh, professors in some sense. And of course, uh, you know, universities use a lot of you know, you know software themselves for administration, library management, and office automation, and so on and so forth. So we try and see whether we can introduce uh, open source into those things. So I'm sort of dividing that there are three different levels at which we work with the university. The one is computer education, other is non-computer, but using source uh, software packages, other is the use. So basically, we sort of support this. Uh, right now, what we have is we, we offer a package of electives. Uh, we have, of course, as you know, universities have a core course and elective course. And we cannot still make this core course something we realize, because if there's a core course that needs to be taken by all students, that needs to be offered in all departments, and so on and so forth. So unless you have, you're sufficiently strong in terms of faculty and the support and so on, we can't introduce a 
co in a course in computer science as a course. We do electives. And of course, we can do a number of electives. So that's really not limiting. Right? So that's what I try to do. And uh, uh, we, we support the universities in introducing these electives uh, by uh, syllabus making. We do teacher training. I think that's the most important thing probably we do. We train the faculty of universities to teach open source courses and guide student projects and so on. And we write books for them. We have written two books uh, for two electives that we offer. We do projects, you know, guidance and so on and so forth. Uh, whatever a, the university department requires, we provide support of that. And uh, uh, for the non-computer people, we find out what are the packages that are being used by other departments and see whether there are equivalents and false, and if available, trying to train them how to use that and so on. And of course, we are government funded, so to an extent, we do all this without much cost to university. Because otherwise, the first thing they will do is, how much will it cost, your training program? We said it doesn't cost too much because we are already funded for doing that. right? And. Uh, uh, so some of the little more details about what we do in human resources. Oh, so far, what we have done is, say, our own university now have two elective courses being offered. Now, these are the subjects, in case you want to know. And there's another university which is offering one course. There's another university. So slowly, universities are adapting open source electives. Today, it's become quite respectable. It's a matter of do we have the bandwidth to reach them and train them. Otherwise, the idea itself is accepted now that uh, open source should be taught in the engineering programs as a part of the formal program with credit. Right? And I said the other thing we do is we also promote certain products and technologies in the uh, universities. And it's a long list. I mean, almost anything where, you know, for example, you have Blender here for anim animation. We have GIS for this, Koha for library, and so on and so forth. Android for uh, mobile, uh, wireless, and so on. So uh, if a university says, OK, we are interested in Android, can you help us? We are able to help. Again, let me tell you, NRC FOSS itself probably doesn't have you know, we don't have too many people under our umbrella. We fall back on the community. And India does have a fairly large open source community of expertise. So if somebody comes to us and say, can you teach us about what is uh, Android or Blender, uh, we know the in the community who are the people who have expertise, so we invite them over, and they conduct those training programs. So it's not that we have all the strength in this area. We certainly don't have. And uh, uh, for example, just last week, I remember, we were doing some science teaching in Delhi. Uh, how do you use uh, science uh, education using open source tools? And first person I did is go back to Dr. Nagarjuna and say, do you know what you do? So he, we get people like that. right? And we also have a, 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 a product which is sell to help people learn open source easier in their environment. Because as the previous speaker said, we have far greater problems with availability of infrastructure, bandwidth, reach, and so on. Right? Uh, uh, because we're expensive. Uh, everything is expensive, and you know, purchasing power in India is not high. So all those issues are there. So these things like this are a way of solving them in the short, short run. Like, OK, if you don't have a broadband access, to your land, then we install this product there, which is kind of some snapshot of uh, open source uh, resources at that time. They put it on the land so that anybody can use that, you know, access almost all of the open source resources available without having to a uh, broadband access and so on and so forth. These are some innovations I think we have done in the process. And uh, uh, Right, so if you say, what have we done so far, it's some figures like this. Of course, I have to do it every six months to get the next installment of money from the government. So this is the latest, uh, I think, what I've told them, right? Uh, uh, so we have, you know, about 400 colleges do this, uh, you know, uh, in the country today. Uh, or can do it, I mean, it's, it's available to them. Not all of them do that, no. I don't. And we have trained about 150 teachers. These trainings are fairly intensive training, in the sense each training, uh, so you have an elective, and we say, okay, you come, we train you on the elective, and it's about 10, 12 days, close to 100 hours of uh, training, theory and hands-on. Uh, we've written books, and I think around 3,000 students have so far done these courses in one way or other, which, of course, looks, the number looks big, but you should remember that we produce uh, 400,000 computer scientists every year right, in our country. So uh, these 3,000 is really nothing. Uh, Right, and uh, we of course promoted some, uh, you know, promoting various packages, and what we are now trying to do is that this is our goal. We want to have open source in at least one university in every province of India, right? But I think there are 33 provinces. The number keeps increasing. More people create more province. So unless we do this soon, we'll have more. You know, 
things to do. So that's one minimal goal, deliverable in terms of uh, what the government gets. And uh, uh, we will be doing this in, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, this is something we are more uh, seriously interested in that, uh, as I said, for us in our country, education